Welcome to the Big Fellas Podcast, where we chop it up about all things past, present, and future about the game of basketball. Where facts, stats, and context reign supreme. That is blasphemous. Sometimes it gets crazy, but we always keep it real. Always keep it real. Get ready to learn from players, coaches, and fans from all levels of the game and see the court in a brand new way. And now, fresh off the sidelines, here's your host, John Hartofillis. What it do, fellas, and welcome to the Big Fellas Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, JH, coming to you from New York City, the mecca of basketball. Today, I'm excited to be joined by George Murison. George is the tallest player in NBA history and the perfect guest for Big Fellas Basketball. In this episode, we had a lot of fun talking about what George has been up to in retirement, his career playing against some of the greatest big men of all time, and what it's like living life at 7'7". Seven seven. We've got a good one in store for you today, fellas. Episode number 25, George Murison, the biggest fella. Buna di manita. Oh, I've, I had this ready. I messed it up. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to get it. <laughs> Buna di minata, George. Buna di minata, man. Oh, so happy to have you on, George. I mean, really, you really embody this podcast. If there's ever been a perfect guest for the show, I mean, it's you being the biggest fella that there is in the NBA history or really everywhere. So thank you so much. Let's say one more time. Buna di minata. Buna di minata. Very well done. I, I'm, I'm Greek, so I have the, the whole accent thing down. I choked a little bit. Are you Greek? That is beautiful. I love Greece. Really? Yes. So what part of Greece are you from? Mainly Rodo, Rhodes. Rhodos? Yeah. Nice. Have you been many times or? In Greece, yes, many times. Because I'm, I'm guessing you played against them too a bunch of times on the national team. Uh, I played against uh, Greece uh, national team a lot of times. I have a lot, a lot of friends in Greece. And uh, I play with... Uh, was my uh, club team to uh, against Greece team. I play against uh, a lot of teams in Greece too. So I have a big respect for uh, Greece basketball. They have a great basketball right there. And now not just that one, they have a great basketball players. Start from uh, Nikos Galis, Yanakis, Vasilas, Christodoulos till uh, the players to play, play in the NBA, so. Yep. Of course, there's so many great European players that don't even that don't even play in the NBA. They want to just stay. They want to just stay there, and people don't know about them here. Uh, yes, uh, uh, what's happened in Europe? Basketball become uh, explode, explode after uh, the first uh, Dream Team Olympics uh, in Barcelona. I mean, really, I mean, we're going to touch on all this stuff, especially with overseas. But really, just well, the first thing I wanted to ask you was, uh, as a kid, did you find basketball? Or did basketball kind of find you? What, what did that look like? A kind of basketball find me more than I find basketball. I don't even want to play basketball, but I just play because I was tall. So uh, the coach knew me because I was tall and they have to make the heights of the team. And uh, I play because I was tall and I have nothing to do in that time. I mean, yeah, so I mean, after I guess after a while, once you really got better, you started to enjoy it because I mean, you were a really hard worker in the NBA. You you know, you won the nineteen ninety six most improved player. Like that must have been a really good feeling for you to really put your all into it and get something out of it. Yeah, that was uh, more appreciative of my work. Oh no, of course. So I mean, with being tall, I mean, obviously you've been you've been tall your whole life. Did you? I mean, you wore the number seventy seven. Was that just kind of like to let people? I mean, because I get I would I guess you'd be asked it all the time. Is it kind of just like back there? That's how tall I am. <laughs> Oh, in that time, I don't pay that much attention to the number. Was uh, was nothing. Uh, number don't get you lucky, or uh, most of the time you make the number. Number don't do not make you. Uh, yes, uh, that is true. I uh, we was in the meeting in uh, Washington Bullets in that time, and they say, uh, if you want, we can make you number seventy-seven. We can get approved from NBA, and you can work seventy-seven. I say that's fine to me. So it was, uh, was more my agent than uh, the team. At that Sorry. time, I don't, care, I don't care about the number at that time. I was uh, just caring to play and to play good and uh, to become a bad, better player. Oh, for sure. And then, so when, like when you came here, right, it, was, it must have been really tough to pick up the language at first. What was that like for you? I was, uh, was, was paying the bot. It was, uh, was history right now. <laughs> it was not very, was not very comfortable because 
we have a good team. I want to be available to talk with the teammates and understand teammates and the basketball court. Uh, at the same time, make me to be extremely focused at the practice. Because when I was focused at the practice, I understand everything what's going on in the court. But the, the, my teammates and my coaches, they have a lot of patience with me at the same time. Uh, they don't have to repeat to me uh, two times uh, the same things. I, I was getting to, but the basketball language is pretty international at the same time. Uh, I know the basketball language, but uh, the worst was what I have to communicate was my teammates. That was the worst part. But uh, my teammates was pretty patient with me. And uh, slow by slow, I start to start to speak in English. And uh, in the beginning, I was kind of afraid to talk because I was, I was not uh, sure if I put everything in the right place. Of course. And then... I mean, I, still, though, I, I think you did. When you said, I love this game, and when you got drafted, I think you did a better job than I did starting off the show, so. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, that was one, one of the first uh, words I, I learned. In, uh, I was a very important person there, uh, Kim Buhuni. She's, she was the, in charge was international uh, players for NBA. And she said, George, you really don't know nothing in English. I say, not really. I say, hey, look, how about you go right there and you say, I love this game. I say, I love this game, man. Talk, hey, but look, thanks about your girlfriend. I love you, this game. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, this everything started. No, I mean, it worked. I mean, you won the fans over. I feel like you were just everywhere you went in the league, you were just a fan favorite. Everyone kind of got to it. I was kind of me. I was kind of natural. So that's it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You, yeah that's the one thing. You were always yourself. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. But, you know what? It was a pretty fun time. I have, a, I have a great time. Even I don't speak English my first uh, year and a half, two, three years, still have a, I still have a good time. And after that, I st after I start to speak English, I cannot stop talking. <laughs> of, of course, let's say I was broken English, but of course. Yeah, but you just love doing it. That's awesome. Yes. Great. So, I mean, you mentioned some of your teammates and how it was kind of difficult to, to, to communicate with them. Who are some of those teammates that, like, you know, you still keep in touch to, with now and, like, you know, you guys are still really close? Man, I don't, uh, I don't come in an NBA to make friends, but I keep, uh, I keep talking with uh, some of the, my teammates from their time. Or I live here in Washington and I still see some of them uh, around Washington, D.C. Uh, was my, one of my first teammates was uh, Michael Adams. I see him uh, many times and I talk with him a lot of times. And uh, Jim Michael Vane, I see him a lot of times. And uh, these are, uh, but I see Michael a lot of times. So uh, Harry, uh, Harry Grant, I see him a lot around the Washington Wizards too. So I still, I still see, see some of them around here in Washington, D.C. Of course, that's awesome. And then like, for example, so you might, I mean, you just touched on it now. You're, you're in D.C. now. Uh, what, what's kind of your role like with the Wizards in the, right, right now? Right now, it's everything is off. Uh, season is off. So right now, I don't have any role. But uh, during the season, I work like a team ambassador for the Washington Wizards. I have a great job in the world. I, uh, I do what, uh, what I love to do. So uh, it's an uh, it's, uh, amazing job. Another thing is just work for... Uh, Wizards, the team I love it, and uh, it's the team I uh, I play first time, and uh, I have the best time here in Washington. So uh, Washington for me all the time was like a second home. Of course. On top of that, I mean, you obviously did a lot of stuff off the court uh, with all the with, with some pretty cool moves you were in, like my giant. What, what was that kind of like? Who kind of thought of that? Uh, I have a I have a meeting with uh, actually it was not there it was uh, uh, before we go in the, well, that was somewhere in '95 before we go on the trip in Los Angeles Billy, Billy Crystal uh, called the the PR department in Washington and they ask if I can't have a lunch with him when I'm in Los Los Angeles. And they pass the message to me and I say, yes, no problems. And uh, we have one day when we don't have a games. And uh, I say, after the practice, I was assuming we have a practice in the morning. I say, after the practice, around one, two o'clock, 
I'm ready to have a lunch with Billy Crystal. And he's coming, pick me up from the hotel, and we go have a lunch somewhere uh, close by. And uh, we talk, and he tell me about the script he have and what he have in his mind. And he give me a copy of the script, was like uh, politics. But after I read the story on the script, the story was so beautiful. I say, oh man, look at this one. This is kind of nice. And uh, after that, we still was talking for a long period of time. And uh, we changed a little bit the script to fit me much better. And we, we start from there. And I will, uh, Billy Crystal, it's a, it's an amazing guy. Uh, it's, uh, I never see anybody in my life to work uh, around 16 hours a day, every day, and all the time be extremely positive and extremely energetic. It's very hard to see. And I say, look at this guy, how energy he have every morning, and how much he was working. I was amazed. And I say, look, this is what I want to be. All the time was a lot of energy ready for uh, for everything in the morning but uh, billy was amazing he helped me a lot i learned a lot from for, from billy crystal and uh, he's my idol well that, that's so cool and i mean when, when you were younger did you ever watch friends the tv show yes did you did you ever see i mean you must have seen it the scene with joey tribbiano where he goes he's on the plane with with uh, chandler chandler's trying to get up to, to go to the bathroom and he's like man I'll never be as good an actor as that giant man. Why? What? He's just so much taller than me, and he's just so upset. Yeah. What was that like? <laughs> What'd you think of that? Uh, that is part of the life. It's uh, a lot more uh, worse and better than uh, words about me. So uh, it's not. Uh, I don't get excited when I hear about me. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I really wanted to ask you that when I saw this, I was like, okay, I have to ask him how this happened. How did you end up in My Name Is by Eminem? What did that look like? That's awesome. Oh, my name is what? Uh, so uh, I was uh, the same. I was here in Washington. I was uh, I was in gender here, and uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Dre called my agent, and they asked if I can be in an Eminem movie for like a thirty seconds, and we make a deal, and we I decide to go to fly to Los Angeles and uh, and uh, do 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 the film right there. So. Uh, I never heard about Eminem before, but uh, I met him there for like a half hour, and uh, he was not this very spectacular for me. He was a shorty guy, was a nice voice, and very smart too. At the same time, he's a very smart person, and uh, was uh, my agent to make this deal. Oh, that's so good. So, uh, was pretty cool and after that when he's, uh, he starts to become bigger and bigger and Dr. Dre told me at that time, I said, look, I'm going to be become very popular. It's very good. So uh, I was enjoyed to do that. It was like a 30 minutes job. <laughs> That's super cool. And I, I, that's another thing. I, I've seen that video so many times and then I watched it again and I saw you as the ventriloquist. I mean, that's yeah. for the people that can't, that can, haven't seen it. Uh, you're the ventriloquist, and it, it's it's really really. You know, uh, to see you in that too. I have a, I have a great time when I do that commercial was the sneaker. That was one of my favorite. That was one of my my best. When I do the commercial was sneakers. The first one was uh, was a good one. No, yeah, I, I saw the one you did with the cologne. That was funny too. Yes, that was uh, <laughs> that was one of my favorite one. The most important is uh, is I have the opportunity to do what what I love to do, and that was the the biggest uh, things for me. Just playing in the NBA and work so hard. I don't even realize I have to work so hard, and I work so hard because everything coming from the pleasure and uh, was a lot of excitement. No, of course. I mean, if you love what you're doing, it's not going to be work at yeah. all. Yeah, you. I mean, you, I'm sure you wake up and you just, you just love. I mean, whether it's helping out the wizards or all these cool things you're doing. The other thing I want to ask you about too was, I mean, I know, I know your your son, your son, little George, just graduated from Georgetown. What was that like for you watching him? And then obviously, I want to talk about Victor, who's who's coming up now. Yes, uh, I'm very proud of George. Uh, he's uh, he just graduated this uh, this spring and he got a nice job and he go back to the school to do his master's degree. So I'm uh, very proud of him. Uh, so all the, all his life, I tell him, I say, look, 
basketball is very short part of your life but basketball give you lots of opportunities yep but the the, 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 the to be a professional in basketball life is very short but you have to have a professional so uh, he 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 was more uh, academic and he was uh, focused a lot on academics but uh, all the time when i go to his game it was very exciting to see him play to see him uh, on the team and i know how hard to work in the school and to practice and it's, it's not easy to play in college when you want to do both school and basketball yeah. it's, it's so hard of course so uh, I'm, i'm extremely proud of him it's, uh, it's he's much he's in better shoes than he used to be for sure and then how's you do i wish i'm like him <laughs> you do yeah. oh i wish i was like him when i was in his in his age oh yes of oh, i mean yeah, that's great And yeah. then, and then, how's uh, how's it, Victor? I know he's a little younger. He's he's just starting, uh, right? Where where is he? If, yeah, he's at Georgetown right now, first year. Okay. He's, okay. He's starting a business there, and uh, hope he's gonna stay healthy. Hope he's gonna play a little bit, and I hope he's gonna become a, a very good businessman. Oh no, of course, no. That's fantastic. That I mean, obviously, yes. you get. I mean, the situation they're in is fantastic. Where you're you're at Georgetown, which is one of the best schools in the country, right? You're you're playing for Patrick Ewing, number one, but also just a fantastic program with a lot of history. And then on top of that, you're primed for for success after after you graduate. Yeah. So uh, look, uh, we was in New Jersey until uh, George was like six years old. We moved back here in Washington. So one time I take him to see Georgetown University. He was like around six, seven years old, and I take him to see uh, Georgetown University. And uh, when we walk on the campus like that, he said, "This is beautiful." He say, uh, "One uh, when I gonna go to college, this is the college I wanted to go." And from that day, that he just want to go to Georgetown. So he got opportunity and he go for it. He do very good in school all the time. Very small kid, is a smart kid, and uh, I'm very, very proud of him. Awesome, yeah. So, I mean, you're obviously doing a lot of really cool stuff down there. What's, what's? Can you tell us a little about the Giant Basketball Academy? Uh, so, uh, after I retired playing basketball, I was, uh, I take off for like eight and a half, and this time I stay in Romania a little bit more longer with my family because I was, I have to catch up because all the time I was away from the family. And I said, okay, I can catch up. And this time was my family. My wife, she catch up with her family. And we kind of stayed there for a, for a long time. And we come back here, we go back and we was up, up back and forth for like a year and a half. And I say, I have to start to do something because I'm gonna get crazy. I say, what the heck I can do? Uh, Everything what I do in my life was playing basketball, nothing else. And I said, I have to do something to spend more time with my kids. Uh, George was like four years, Victor, while I was like two years old. And I decided to open a basketball academy. And like this, I know the kids in the morning, they're gonna be in the school, uh, kindergarten, and after they go to the school, they're gonna be in the school. And after the afternoon, they can be with me in the basketball court. And like this, I can spend more time with my kids and uh, learn and uh, like this, we grow up together. So uh, this is what I started the Giant Basketball Academy and uh, we become uh, very well, we do very well. And we used to have a lot of kids before, uh, uh, before the last spring was the pandemic coming and broke everything down. Hope this is gonna go away soon. And uh, we, start to do different programs start to with some we start with summer camps and basketball leagues and we do a lot of basketball leagues and uh, clinics and summer camps and i work with the kids uh, six and uh, 14 years old yep. uh, uh, younger kids and uh, I, have, i have a great time it's uh, it's uh, you know it's uh, i have a, such a nice feeling when i see these kids how much they improve and uh, yeah. they come in for eight, 10 weeks and I see they, they, how much they improve in a couple of weeks. This makes me feel, uh, feel uh, more important and feel I helped uh, help these kids with something. So oh, uh, that's what I'm starting with the, this. So um, now uh, we, are, uh, we are off right now until uh, 
we see how will be the situation with the pandemic uh, right now with the COVID-19. Hope, uh, hope soon uh, we can start again and continue to do the leagues and the camps. Oh yeah, of course. That's 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 awesome, and everything you're doing is great, and it's 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 awesome that you're able to spend more time with your family and keep on getting all the joy you're getting out of coaching the game. That's exactly, awesome. exactly, exactly. Being the basketball, the, the, I tell you the truth. After I started playing basketball, I started playing when I was uh, 15, and look, man, all day this is what I was doing, playing basketball. So if you want to be good in, in basketball and whichever you you, you want to be good on, you have to put a lot of patience and. Uh, you have to work a lot. So I was, uh, I was, uh, in my head was only basketball, every every second. Yeah. And all the time I just, I work to get them better, to get them better, and I spend spend most most of my time just working. I mean, you must be really happy right now. You know what? I'm I'm very happy. Yes, I'm happy because the kids they. Uh, they're doing very well in the school, and uh, I happy in what I die. If I have to start to do it again, I cannot do better than I do. Through that, I also saw something about how you've, you've really been pushing for three on three basketball. Well, what's that? What does that look like for you? How, what do you think about yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, we started this league three on three a uh, couple years ago, and this was uh, was crazy when we started. A lot of my coaches and the parents, they was not uh, very very exciting and in the end they become extremely exciting because the kids get improved and uh, three on three is uh, it's amazing sport because for the kids they learn more in three on three short period than five on five they cannot hide during the game three on three they have to become involved and uh, they have to discover themselves. So the, for the kids to discover themselves, it's, it's a great, great game to play Toronto. Even in NBA, during the practice, sometimes we do some uh, drills on three on three. Yep, of course. Uh, yeah, because it makes you to be more active on offense, more active on defense. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we, we start to do leagues in the fall and the spring three on three. And they was uh, they have very big success, and uh, I'm I'm pretty big fan of three on three, uh, and I think for the kids it's uh, it's unbelievable uh, game and sport because they are active and they get involved. They cannot hide. They can yeah. okay, they can get involved with the ball, and that is the reason I believe it's uh, it's a great success for the kids three on three. Of course. And uh, right now, it's uh, another thing. It's Olympic sport right now. That's so how it will. So everybody should play three on three right now. Everybody should start to play. First of all, you get some better, and uh, you add more three on three if you are a kid than five on five. Because if you are a little bit more timid, you have to get involved. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, when you came into the league. And like, like you, you're, they're all games where you're playing in some of the, I mean, in the '90s, some of the best big men of all time, right? And, and there was no, and there's no standing in place or hiding from a guy like Shaq or Hakeem or or David Robinson yeah. and stuff like that. You know, they could be, NBA, they could be, yeah. Look, NBA is uh, the top of the top league in basketball in the world, uh, and NBA at uh, that time was around four, four hundred some players. Right now, it's around five hundred players they play right now, but. Uh, to play in NBA, you have to be special. You cannot be just a basketball player. You have to have something special to, to play in NBA. And these special players, they are around uh, around 500 players. Yeah, out of the millions uh, in the world. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's easy. Sometimes it's easy to become an NBA player, and it's very hard to stay an NBA player. Yep. Uh, it's. Uh, it's very hard to become an NBA player because you have to have a lot of tools and you have to be extremely special. Oh, oh, de oh, definitely. You were able to do things on the court that a lot of people, other people couldn't do. And that got, it's a got you to the NBA. So then you get to the NBA and you're going up against guys like Hakeem, Shaq, David Robinson. Which one of those guys kind of like such a shock to you to play against them? 
Sach was not either one. I love to, I love the competition. So, uh, so it was not that big sh uh, shock, but uh, I it was, uh, every night was different. I don't see one night the same. I don't see one team the same. Uh, only things that I can tell you after I play against Shark, I have to eyeball, uh, eyes my eyeball, my shoulder, my hips, my <laughs> knee. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was a heavy, heavy player, extremely good player, but extremely heavy, very powerful. And you use a lot your uh, your shoulders, your eyeballs, your knee. You, you use pushing him around and uh, get yeah. your position. He was an amazing player, and uh, God bless him. Uh, Shaq, Patrick, uh, Patrick Alonso, Alonso Morning, or uh, Hakim Olajuwon, Rick Smith from Indiana. They were extremely talented players. Of a show. So, but uh, again, this was the biggest competition, and this is what I love to compete. But every team has somebody, somebody good in the team. Everybody. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't say okay tonight. It's easy night. No. You you never say that in the NBA because the teams they have uh, full of players, so everybody just want to go in and uh, even bench players. They just want to come in the court, prove the coach they are very good uh, players and they deserve more to play. And they come in to beat you. They come in to become better player. And you cannot sleep uh, against anybody. Of course. I mean, they're, they're all so good. And it, it's interesting when you talk about how just every single night was, was a tough competition because, I mean, think about how many Hall of Fame big men played in your era. Almost, almost all of them. When you talk about the top 10 big men of all time, yes. like seven, of them, seven, of them played, seven of them played the same year as you were playing. So every team, exactly, every team's going to go. Somebody's right there. Uh, I remember when I played against uh, Dikembe Mutombo, everybody was afraid of him. Yep. He was an unbelievable player. He was a great defense, one of the best defenders in the NBA. Uh, but uh, I was lucky to play against these guys, and uh, I'm lucky I can be friends with them. We compete in the, basketball, uh, in the basketball game. We compete in the courts. We give everything, but after that, right now, we look back and we, we can smile. Definitely. And we can shake our hands and we can talk right now. And that's, that's the spirit of competition, the fact that, you know, you guys can be yes. arch rivals on the court and then you guys walk away from it. And there's, there's so much respect there, of course. Oh, yes, yes. It's a, it's a big respect and uh, I, I love these guys and uh, I wish them well. Of course. So, I mean, another uh, guy who's uh, very similar to yourself, uh, Manu Bowl, I was on a 10 day with the Bullets when you were a rookie. And I, I didn't know that until I looked it up. So, I mean, what was that kind of like, you know, having two of the tallest players in my history on the same, on, on the so, same team for just so, a short time? Yeah, we, he, he had a 10 days contract with was, was Washington Bullets in that time here. It was good because it made me pump in up a little bit. And, uh, but uh, during the summers, uh, Manu, he was uh, living here in, um, in Washington. So we was practiced together all summer long. But uh, yep. he was a great guy. He talked a lot, that's it. But he was a great guy. When you guys were playing those one-on-one -on -one games, I mean, what was that? Did you guys check it at the top of the key? Was it all post-ups? What did you guys do? Uh, we play a lot one-on-one, -on -one. yes. Uh, we play before the games all the time. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, you know what? Uh, we was like a two little kids in the basketball game, in the, in the basketball court. Uh, we, we do we do everything uh, check on the top just play post everything yeah. okay oh, awesome yeah man not all the cool. time say george I, I play better than i play better than i say man just keep losing against me all the time but right now he was he was the winner God bless his heart. <laughs> yes yeah. he, he was a, he was a great 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 person uh, i see him last time uh, two years before he passed away and i uh, was very sad uh, moments when I uh, when I hear he pass away so of course no definitely rest in peace to my new yeah. I mean he was I mean I I've obviously uh, never met him but I've, I've always just heard nothing but great things about him he was an extremely nice person and I wish his son Bol Bol gonna get uh, gonna get better and better every year 
Bobo's just so good. You saw, I mean, did you see what he did in the bubble where he just went in and just, and first game he, he was playing, he was playing, he's still, he's still considered a rookie now too, which is awesome. But he, he goes in and he just, he did, I forget what team it was. He was lighting up from three. He was doing everything, bringing the ball up. It was great. Yes. Yeah. Hope he's going to stay healthy and going to play better and better. Uh, so, I mean, off that, I mean, obviously I wanted to talk to you really quickly about the bubble, but what is that? I mean, watch, seeing how the big man position has evolved in recent years to where you have guys, I mean, like Giannis is kind of like the modern NBA big man where he's bringing the ball up the floor and, and making plays. So, look, I know basketball changed a lot. Uh, I mean, crazy a lot. You see the players, they have a lot more athletics right now. They have a better, a lot better uh, ball handle skill. Yep. They, uh, they shoot much better right now. Uh, the technology, the... the Everything is different right now. You know, when 20 years, everything's changed. And mm -hmm. the coaches get better and better and better. The players, they, they, they get better how they work out. The kids, they, they, they start to a lot to, uh, better practice right now. So that, that means in the last 20 years, basketball improved a lot. And you can see right now, you can see in my time, big men, they play under the hoop and that's it. Mm -hmm. Right now, they play in and out. And every team, they're looking for players. They, they, they can play in and out. They can uh, defense multiple positions. They can play multiple positions. And I think basketball this time, it's, uh, it's much faster. It's a lot much technical. Players are much better in, this, in these days. And the game, the basketball game is much, uh, it's much fun to watch right now. And it's interesting you say that because most people uh, that played uh, back then would you know, always say that like, oh, you know, LeBron wouldn't survive in the, in the 80s or 90s. How, you're, you're acknowledging how every single year it just gets better and better and better. And 20 years from now, we'll be saying the same thing. Oh, yes, yes. LeBron and uh, 20 years ago, maybe we'll be different players because 20 yep. years ago, he don't have the technology and the technology it's right now. Yep. But uh, the technology right now, look, uh, 20 years ago, we don't have a shooting uh, shooting machine. Yep. Right now we have a shooting machine. You can stay right there and you can do in a, in a 60 minutes, you can do almost 2,000 shots. Yep. You can't uh, do your cardio on a shooting machine. So, uh, all this add and uh, the, the, the technology of the food, the nutrition right now, it's big, big difference. Yep. And uh, the workout is big difference and uh, everything right now is, is changing. And, uh, in 20 years, uh, we learn uh, and the players, uh, the coaches learn to how to get the players better and better. For sure, no, it's definitely happened. At the time we're recording this, the NBA Finals, the game one's on tonight. How excited are you for what series we're about to see? Man, uh, I, I want to I see a good game. That's it. Yep, same here. Uh, yeah, I just want to see a good spectacular. When I watch the game, I want to watch a spectacle. Yep. I want to see uh, players play hard. I want to see players finish their shots. Go to the hoops. I want to see block shots. I want to see defense. I want to see everything tonight. Yep. Uh, so who's winning? I don't care. Surprise oh, no, of course, me. Yeah. Surprise me, Miami. They, they 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 become a very good team in this playoff and uh, and uh, in the bubble and, and Orlando. They become a surprising team and surprise me how good they play against uh, Boston. They kind of shut yep. down Boston. Uh, they they, uh, they play very smart and very good. Uh, Lakers, they play like how they play. They have a great team and uh, it's very hard to keep up with two, two, two of the best players in the NBA right now. No, of course. Yeah. And when you have uh, two, two best players in the league and the same team, it's so hard to, to keep them and stop some players, nobody. Players just coming like Caruso and become a great player and have a great playoff. Yep. And uh, it's so hard to keep up with them. But uh, now I want to see how Miami gonna distribute their defense to keep up with Los Angeles. I want to see how the, the how the system and how well they put together the rotation. 
against uh, Lakers. I want to see this. Uh, this is going to be very interesting for me. I want to see how Miami executes against a good defense like Lakers here. So, all this, uh, I, I want to see. I want to see a good game. At the end of the day, this is what I want to say. I want to see a great final. I hope we're gonna go to seven games. Yeah. And because right now I have uh, not no much to do right now, so I have to stay and watch some games right now. <laughs> Same so here. I, I miss I miss watching too. I watch basketball, and I hope I'm gonna start soon to watch uh, college and high school basketball too. Because uh, it's uh, sports get mine away from a lot of stuff when you watch sports, and this is exciting. And like, that's the same thing I think about that too, because I mean, there, there's no real like favorite team. I'm not like, you know, dying for one team to win. I just want to see if every single game ended in, in a close game. I mean, that, that, that's all I could ask for. This is what's for me. This is what I want to see. I want to see close game. I want to see exciting game. And I don't okay. care who's winning or losing. Don't make me feel better or feel good for one team or another team. I feel good when I, I see a good basketball game. I really hope it goes seven because we don't know when basketball is going to be back after this. So, I mean, just keep on letting it go as long as we possibly can. I hope in January we have NBA basketball and yep. uh, I hope we can watch a good games in January. But okay. right now, the, the situation that we are in now, it's, uh, it's not a good situation for sports and for everything else. I, uh, I used to love to go to the Wizards game. I used to love it. And right now, this is kind of take away from me because of the pandemic. And I hope we're going to go back on, uh, on, the, on the routine when we can go to the game and you can hear the crowd cheering for the team and get their, uh, their uh, gym energy. Uh, this, is what, uh, it's, uh, this is what I miss. So uh, all the time when I go to, to, the, to, the, to the Wizards game, I was, all the time I was looking forward to see their uh, energy what was going on in the gym, fans and the games. <clears throat> so this is what I'm missing right now. I hope we can get it back really soon. So George, I mean, thank, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, it, this was a great talk. I had so much fun. I've laughed so much during this whole thing because I mean, my, everything we're talking about is great. Man, I'm so happy I see you and uh, thank you to invite me. And I wish you luck. So uh, thank you. I hope you're going to do one day the Greek version too. Oh, I borrow a little bit of Greek. That's why it's very difficult. Do you know any Greek or no? Uh, I know a little bit. A couple, yeah. Only to a couple words, but I just say good hi, goodbye, and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Good. How do you how do you say goodbye in Romanian? Goodbye. Oh, sorry, sorry. La rivedere, la rivedere, la rivedere, right? Yeah, la rivedere, oh. la rivedere, George. <laughs> okay, la rivedere, man. Thanks for listening to the Big Fellas Podcast. Check us out on all major social media platforms at Big Fellas Pod to join the chop up. You can also listen to us on every podcast platform on the planet. Stay tuned for the next episode, Big Fellas.